Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, this is question number five now from the January 2023 International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P4 paper. Um, here we have a question about this um, curve, which is a weird kind of looking curve. And it seems like it has two um, sections here where it's like the limit of its domain. It doesn't have any x values between those values there. All right, it says. Um, y squared equals 2x squared plus 15x plus 10y that is the equation of this graph it's not a function because we see that there are it's, it's one to many okay it's not actually classed as a function um we've got to find dy dx in terms of x and y so we've got to differentiate this and find dy dx now when you have an expression that's like where it's difficult to make y the subject. For example, here you've got y squared and you have a y. And to make y the subject, make it y equals some function of x, is going to be you know, difficult, if not impossible, make life difficult for you if you wanted to try and do it. Then there's an alternative way for us to find dy dx, okay, which is a gradient function. And that is what's called implicit differentiation. And that is based upon the fact that when you differentiate an expression, you are differentiating each term separately. Okay, so for example, when I'm, when I have, for example, um, you know, an expression like uh, y equals x squared plus three x minus one. You know, we differentiate when we find dy dx. We differentiate each term separately. So basically, this becomes two x. This becomes plus three, and this becomes zero. Okay, so each term is differentiated separately. So basically what we're, do, what we're doing here is we're actually differentiating both sides of the equation. That's what we're doing. Okay, we're, we're taking one side of the equation and differentiating that with respect to x. And we're taking the other side of the equation and we're differentiating all of this with respect to x. As I mentioned earlier in terms of, um, you know, when we're doing integration, okay, um, you know, especially when you have differential equations, it's a similar kind of thing. So when we're differentiating something like this, what we're actually doing is we are differentiating both sides with respect to x. Most of us write y equals and dy dx equals. When you write dy dx, you have basically differentiated y with respect to x. So, you know, when you differentiate something with respect to x, okay, if it's um, a function of x like y, then you differentiate it as normal, so that becomes 1, but then you have to write dy dx next to it. Why? Why do you have to write dy dx next to it? Because it's like inside that function is y. And the differential of y with respect to x is dy dx. Okay, so you differentiate as normal, get 1, and then you, do, you, you have to write dy dx next to it. Okay, so that's um, why that becomes dy dx, which you don't really think about when we're doing differentiation in IGCSE or in P1 or P2. And the same thing happens on this side. We're differentiating each term with respect to x. We have x squared being differentiated with respect to x. We've got 3x being differentiated with respect to x. And we've got minus 1 differentiated with respect to x. Okay? So we end up with this, is, this becomes 2x. This becomes plus 3. That becomes minus 1. All right? Um, plus, oh, that becomes 0, sorry. Not minus 1. That becomes 0. So you end up with 2x plus 3. So dy dx equals 2x plus 3. Now, we don't, we don't actually go through all of that process when we are differentiating you know, something. We just write y equals this, dy dx equals 2x plus 3. That's what we've been doing since IGCSE. But this is actually the process that we are going through in our, you know, the actual mathematical process. We are differentiating each term separately with respect to x, including this y. Okay, so what we do to one side of the equation, we do to the other side, just like when we're solving equations, just like when we're integrating all right, we're doing the same thing to one side that we're doing to the other. That's what we do when we solve an equation. So we're going to apply that now to this, and hopefully that will make you understand what happens when we do implicit differentiation. So I'm going to differentiate every single term with respect to x. All right, now you don't have to write this, this particular step down, but I just want to do it to show you what's happening. So we're, we're differentiating this side with respect to x, and we're differentiating all of this side with respect to x. So 2x squared plus 15x plus 10y. That's what we're doing. What we do to one side, we do to the other. Okay. All right. So this becomes, when you differentiate something in terms of y, 
with respect to x you differentiate as normal okay so it's like you've got something to the power of two so how do you differentiate that you multiply by the power and you take one from the power so you, this stays as it is you take one from the power then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function and what's inside the function well it's y so you differentiate y with respect to x you get dy dx Okay, so whenever you differentiate something that, that's in terms of y, you differentiate it as you normally would, but then you have to put multiplied by dy dx because it's an apl application of the chain rule, basically. You're multiplying by what's, out, what's inside the differential of what's inside the function. And then for this, we're going to differentiate. And of course, you don't have to write this down the way I'm writing it down. I'm just doing this for the purpose of you understanding what's going on. All right, I'm just as like a, a little explanation. So all of these are differentiated with respect to x as separate terms. Okay, when they're added or subtracted, they're separate terms. So this is 2y dy dx equals. This is in terms of x. So when you differentiate it, it's just 4x. Multiply by the power, take one from the power. Same thing here. This is in terms of x. When you differentiate it, you just drop the x. It becomes x to the power of 0. And here, the 10y, well, when you differentiate 10y, okay, you end up with 10 okay because this becomes y to the power of zero so it's one times ten to the power of zero so the y y term becomes power of zero but then you have to multiply by the differential what's inside the function which is dy dx so you end up with this when you have differentiated each term separately now we want to find what dy dx is so what we can do is we can bring the dy dx terms together on one side so what i'll do is i'll write this as 2y dy dx minus 10 dy dx equals 4x plus 15. I can take dy dx as a factor of this side. So I have 2y minus 10 equals 4x plus 15. And then finally, I can say dy dx equals 4x plus 15 over 2y minus 10. And there we have our answer for this question. Question number five part a and now for part b question number five says the curve is not defined for values of x in the region p to q as shown in the figure in figure two using your answer to part a which is this um, or otherwise find the value of p and the value of q so we can see here that this is like x equals p and x equals q and this curve like turns at this point, at these points where x equals p and q touches them. So this is like, um, you could say, the tangent at x equals p and x equals q. So we can say at x equals p and q, we can say that dy dx is undefined. It's like vertical. So the gradient is undefined. Okay, dy dx is equal to, it's not equal to zero, it's, it's, it's a vertical line. Okay, vertical. Change in y is, the change in x is 0, right? Okay, so we can say here, therefore, if this is going to be undefined, the denominator is going to be 0. When something's undefined, its denominator is 0. When something's equal to 0, its numerator will equal to 0. So if the gradient was 0, if it's horizontal, then 4x plus 15 would be 0. But if it's vertical, then the denominator will be 0. So we can say that 2, 2y minus 10 must equal 0. In which case, 2y equals 10, and y equals 10 over 2, which is 5. All right, so we know that this is the point at which y equals 5. Okay, at this point, y equals 5. Okay, the place where it turns. Okay, so let me just... Yeah, so that's, that's the line y equals 5. So we want to find the x value at these points because that's what x, p and q are. So what we can do is we can take our original equation which is y squared equals 2x squared plus 15x plus 10y and we can replace the y with 5 and see what values of x we're going to get. So this is going to be 25 equals 2x squared plus 15x plus 50. All right so if we bring everything to one side we have 2x squared plus 15x and we're going to have 50 minus 25 which is plus 25 equals zero All right so we want to solve this equation i don't think we can simplify this any further so we have two numbers that multiply to give you 50 and add to give you 15. 
um, 10 times 5. Right, that's right. So you've got 2x squared and you've got plus 25. Okay. We want two numbers. When you multiply them together, you get 50x squared. And when you add them, you get plus 15x. So it's 10 times 5. So you can put 10x plus 5x. 50x, 50, that's right. So we can take out the common factor from, from these two. That's 2x. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. And x times 5 is 5x. So we end up with 2x plus 5 and x plus 5 equals 0. So we can say x equals minus 5 over 2 and x equals negative 5. So x equals, so p is must be negative 5 and q must be negative 5 over 2. And as we see, that's 0. So these are both negative. That kind of makes sense in what we have from our diagram. So those are the values of p and q, and that's what we had to find. Okay, so there's the answer to the question. So the key to answering this question is when you have a vertical line, its gradient is infinite. Its gradient is undefined, which will happen when you divide the gradient function by when the gradient function is equal to 0 in the denominator. When the denominator is zero, this will be undefined. So that's how we worked out that that's the line where y equals five, because that's when this is undefined. Okay, so there's the answer to question part five, five part B. And that concludes this question. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist. The playlist will appear in this region here. Other questions from the topic of um, implicit differentiation from P4 can be found in the playlist in this section here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch a video here which will explain how to use my channel in a very efficient manner to find what you're looking for thank you for watching and see you soon